Uh, my name's James Ripke. I live at 8405 Meridian Court in Sacramento. And it is Ripke with no S in it, right? Yeah, R-I-P-K-E. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ripke, uh, we talked briefly before you're taking the stand, but we didn't get a chance to talk at very at any great length. Uh, and uh, because we're putting you in out of order here, uh, I'm going to ask you, uh, first of all, you are in the trucking business? Yes, I'm still in. Uh, how long have you been a trucker? 23 years. Uh, do you have your own business? Yes, I do. And uh, uh, where do you truck from? What's your base? Uh, I drive from Sacramento down to Oakland twice a day. Okay. And what do you, what do you uh, carry? Uh, a lot of food products, almonds, rice, um, computer stuff. That's not food, but... Okay. All right. And, and do you... Uh, uh, when you truck, do you truck to a, a delivery site uh, in, in some town, or do you do actually do street-to-street, merchant-to-merchant deliveries? Uh, basically, I deliver the overseas container bins from customers to the Oakland ports. Okay. Would you tell us when you first came into knowledge of what the California Air Resource Board was doing and how it affected you. Uh, about 2005, I bought a truck and built that for two years. Uh, then I heard about the CCAP program through the Dump Truck Association. I'm sorry if I'm talking too fast for you. Um, lost train of thought there, I'm sorry. But then uh, once I heard about the CCAP program, I thought, oh, hey, get a brand new truck, make a good living with it. Um, the economy went down. I had to turn the truck back in, so it was my house. Tell us about the truck. What, what was that truck that you had at the time? I had a 2008 Peterbilt fully loaded. I had rock tubs. I could haul anything I want with it. Uh, basically, I drove for about two and a half years. I couldn't make the payment. Um, turned it back into the uh, dealer I bought it from, and he looked at me like, no, you're not turning that truck back in. I said, I'm not losing my house over this truck. Uh, then I went to look for other work. I went all the way down to the gutter, working with drug addicts, eight hours a day. Then I went to two... Uh, Taco Bell and McDonald's to make money, to make a living. Back up now to the point where you were making a, you were making a livable income with your truck at the time the car program affected you. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, and I want to know what what did you go 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 back in detail as to. What happened? Your, your truck was not in compliance, is that correct? My first truck uh, wasn't uh, in compliance to the CARB program. I thought I went through the CCAP program to be in compliance with the program. Right. And could it have been put into compliance with, with one of these filters? Uh, they said no because it wasn't uh, computer generated, I mean uh, through the throttle. It, it had wasn't what? Out. It had to have a computer on it. Okay. It wasn't new enough to get that uh, filter on it. Okay, so in other words, what you were told is your truck could not be in compliance. Yes, sir. Uh, however, it was uh, registered, and, and the Department of Motor Vehicles did register it as being a valid truck to operate on the highways. Yes. All right. Um, so then when, when you were told then that your truck just couldn't be under compliance, who, who told you that? And, in what process did they tell you that? That I don't remember, sir. I'm did, sorry. did someone at CARB just tell you that? Or did you go through a hearing or a meeting with the board? I just heard about the CCAP program and thought it was a good program to get a newer truck so I could get my own one off the road. Okay. So, uh, and, and where did you borrow the money uh, to buy the truck? Uh, through the CCAP program. And that, and tell us about that program. That, that's, that, that is, it, it's a fun, it, is it a program that, that CARB set up? Uh, it was grant money that they gave me to get my old truck off the road. 
Okay, they gave you, Car CARB gave you grant money to get your old truck off the road. Yes, sir. And how much was that? $61,200. 61000 And And what what did you use that 61000 for? To uh, buy a new uh, tractor. Okay. And what was the age of it? 2008. Okay. And, uh, and from everything that you knew of the program, it would be in compliance? Yes, sir. And for how long would it be in compliance? Uh, 2018. Okay. And so then, uh, and so you began trucking with that new truck? Yes, sir. And then tell us what happened. Uh, like, uh, uh, drove for two years. Uh, the economy started going down. I kept looking for work for it. At, uh, at five brokers, they couldn't work their trucks. And I just finally just gave it up to the dealer. Uh, who who couldn't use who couldn't work their trucks? Uh, other uh, brokers that I was going through okay. to get work. Okay. All right. And so, what? Tell us then now what happened once once you you realized you couldn't make it with that truck. Is that right? Yes, sir. Uh, I kept uh, talking to the person I was financing it through. He kept telling me if I can't make a payment, I was borrowing money from my father-in-law. I still owe that money back. Um, Sorry. That's all right, Mr. Ripke. Let's take a minute. Basically. Basically, I was taking my wife's inheritance to keep this truck, which was very stupid. I wish I didn't do it. I wish I didn't even hear the program. It hurt me really bad. All right. Until this time, you'd been trying to uh, come into compliance uh, with the law every way you could. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, and so when you when you found yourself in this position, um, and uh, and you were not, and you made the decision, you were not going to to risk everything uh, to keep that truck going. Uh, yeah. What what did you do then? I drove it back to the dealer and handed the keys. Um, he looked at me like, no, you, you can't uh, you can't turn that truck back in here. I still own the tubs. I'm still paying on the tubs. I'm never seeing them again. You know, he, it sat there at the dealer for two and a half years. Every day I drove by it, looking at it, saying, oh my God, I can't, you know, I didn't want to drive down the, down the freeway, but I had to look at it to see if it was still there. And, when, it, and in fact, uh, what, what you had done, what you tried to do was uh, turn the truck back in uh, for the value of it, and uh, and get the uh, get the note on it uh, dissolved. Yes. So, uh, uh, but but in fact, the dealer wouldn't take it back on that basis. Uh, they did take it back, so that it wouldn't hurt my credit. So I could okay. keep my house. All right. Uh, and then kept it there for at least two and a half years that you know of, and and didn't sell it, didn't do anything with it. Uh, and then what, what is the last straw? What happened? Um, uh, just to make a living, you know, I went to um, Liberty to work with drug addicts. I took people to, jo to places to set up uh, office furniture to you know, do odd jobs so I can make a living since I lost the truck. Did you get sued, Mr. Ripke? Yes, I'm being sued right now from the Air Quantum Metro Program. Uh, and uh, what's the amount of that lawsuit? What are they seeking in that lawsuit? For the, from the Air Quantum Metro Program. Sorry, yeah. By the Air Quality Management Program? Yes. And uh, that's, the, that's the State Air Quality Management Program? Yes. And they want the full amount back at sixty-one thousand. So they're suing you for your for return of the grant money 
that they made available to you because you uh, deserted your first truck because it wasn't in compliance. Yes, sir. Did, uh, are there any questions by the members of the board of this witness? There's a question over here, Mr. Hearing Officer. There's a question from Mr. Hearing Officer. There's a question over here. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm curious. I'm curious uh, how long did they loan you the money for on the truck? For five years. For, wow. So. And so you're getting sued for the 61000 that the government gave you to, as a grant to turn in your old truck. And, uh, yes. You. Uh, you know, it's, it's like they're trying to get money out of me, which, you know, like I said, I went all the way down to working with drug addicts to make a living. And it, I can't. I can't pay it back. I still got an equity loan on my on my house for the tubs that I'll never see again that I'm paying on still. Uh, somebody else. We have another question. We hear it now. There we go. My question relates to the grant, um, and uh, my question would be: They're suing you over. Uh, a grant is essentially uh, uh, a them bestowing a certain amount of money on you. The terms and conditions of the grant were that you surrender your vehicle. You did that, correct? Yes, sir. If you surrendered the vehicle and complied with the terms of the grant, then what is their premise for suing you? Why are we trying? Why are they trying to obtain the money back from you that was a grant? Uh, we have a lot of kids who get grants to go to college who don't finish college, and I don't know that we're suing any of them to get their grant money back. I, I just am curious if, I, I'm sure that you may know the, the reason for the lawsuit, but may not, and if you don't, it, then this question would be directed at some point in time to the car board to know why we are suing this gentleman. I'd be interested to know as a taxpayer. Uh, they're suing me because they said that I didn't apply the numbers that they needed for the for the truck staying in the area the where it stayed for two and a half years it was in the zone it never the I helped try to help the salesman sell it once because I caught him on the road with it um, the person that uh, that he drove the truck to said it was too much truck uh, for his business you know owner operator you could have you put it on what you want in it. So it's going to make it, make it last so you can work it several years before you have to buy another one. But they, they said I wasn't in compliance with it staying in the area when it did. Mr. Hearing Officer, if I might. One, one thing that, that uh, I think we need to bring into context here with the gentleman that's speaking, and, and I understand in... in uh, it hurts me in the heart to see you have to go through. Uh, some of us have been going to CARB meetings over the last couple of years, and we've heard this story over and over again where, uh, where CARB really just doesn't care. But the, the thing that's really coming down is CARB, and in essence the state of California, are doing things they can get away with. That. Um, whether whether it's the no science that they're moving forward, whether it's taking a truck away from you, uh, we need we need to get their attention and turn this around to where the people are being represented, not the state and not CARB, not Mary Nichols, and it's a crying shame that this is happening to you and to, and to others. And I, uh, I I wish I could apologize for them, but uh, thank you for coming today. I have one more question for you, sir. This relates to the uh, testimony that we received earlier from the doctor, and I'm just wondering if at any point in time, uh, given your trade and profession, uh, and, and being someone I would consider to be an expert in the field of trucking as you have done it for several years, 
and have an expertise that is above and beyond that of the normal layman who has not performed that profession. And, and, and because this directly relates to your health, you don't have to answer this should you choose not to, but have you noticed any ill effects with regard to your uh, cardiovascular condition as a result of particulate matter? And has anybody ever asked you as a person who has direct contact with a lot of small particulate if you have any of those effects? No, I don't have any of those effects. Great. Thank you, sir. Well, thank you for your testimony. Uh, sorry, this is coming down on you like this. I have a question of uh, how long did it take for CARB to sue you between after you sold the vehicle or returned it? Six years. It's, you know, it's already been past the term limit. It's a, you know, there's no, they don't have a ground to even come after me. I don't have the truck. I don't have the records of where it's been driven. I have none of it. I don't see where are they coming after me when they could have went to the dealer and seen the truck was sitting there and put a thing on the truck that um, the person that buys it has to take over that responsibility if they want to know where that truck is at. Don't come after me. Go okay, after the person so, that owns it. So I think the uh, issue here is statute of limitations. How long? How long? How long? Long can they take to get back out? Uh, are you represented uh, in your lawsuit by an attorney? Yes. Okay. Uh, the the truck that uh, that you had to give up uh, was it equipped with a filter? Yes. Uh, did you have any mechanical problems with that truck while you were driving it? No, I didn't. So uh, the way it came. The way you bought it already with the filter, um, none of your costs, uh, uh, maintenance or anything went up? No. Okay. Uh, any, uh, I have no other questions, Mr. Ramos. Mr. Ripke, thank you very much.